moment um, we have a boat rafted to us. Um, now they're only rafting for a short period of time, so they are rafted using our cleats. However, if they were here for a longer period of time, then really they should run shorelines. And that's the correct way to raft if you're rafting for a long time. And why is this a matter of such importance here in Douglas of all places? Well, the, um, the boat... The boat's from Liverpool. Yeah. Oh, they have a, the, when it's the 24 hour race or the Isle of Man race, there's usually huge rafts and they never raft to the shorelines. They have had complaints. <laughs> but um, if you're only going to be for a short period of time, then uh, rafting to somebody's cleats is fine, But which is what this boat's doing, because they're just waiting for the um, gate to open on the lock. However, they've got to wait for um, other vessels to, uh, and boat movements. And are we expecting one? Yes, there's a, a huge vessel coming in. and we've chosen the harbour wall. Uh, now um, in Douglas the harbour wall for our boat because obviously sizes do vary um, works out about six or seven pounds cheaper per night so um, as long as you don't mind climbing the ladder it's a good saving to have. The other uh, reason um, we've come onto the harbour wall is it's actually easier to get out um, because you're just going to go straight out whereas um, the pontoons here are quite confined and can be uh, difficult to get out of. Right so we've come into Douglas in a harbour and we're moored on the harbour wall. Now this is an area we've had inquiries about in the past so what we're going to do is take you through the steps of setting up a harbour wall mooring and the first step is to look for a line called a riser which runs from the top of the wall and is anchored at the bottom that has to be anchored down there otherwise it doesn't work and what you do with a riser is you get your mid cleat you pass a line through the riser back to your mid cleat and it allows the boat to travel up and down the wall and stay close to it this marina doesn't have a riser so we're going to have to make our own it's got a very substantial ladder here uh, which is well secured and looks to be in good order and there's very very little current through this this so that there's not much stress I mean I can actually hold the boat and move it around just by pushing so there's very little stress on on this ladder so we can use this to make a riser so what I've done for now is I've simply just secured the boat with this line it's just a clove hitch around one of the rungs and on the other end of the line which I have ready I've already put a bowline my riser is going to go through this bowline so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a standard mirroring line and I'm going to use this to make my riser on these steps. Now we're as low down as we go at this point in time. The boat will not get any lower. So what I can do is I can just pick a rung nice and low down like um, say this one here and I get must remember to put it through my line first. And then I'm going to go as high up as the boat will go and drop this down. And then I can collect it at this end and pull the rest of the line through. So now what I've got 
here is a line that the boat can travel up and down and it will be clearer when I take this out of the way in just a minute. So I'll get this set up and then we'll come back and look at it. So I've now got the riser which runs up to here and down to there and as you can see I've got the loop of rope on it so the boat can't stray very far. This rope holds the boat here and as the tide lifts this rope will slide up to here and as the tide drops it will slide back down. This is the line that tied up with just, to, just temporarily. It's no longer needed. Might as well get rid of it. Once you have your riser in place and you're secured to the wall, the next thing to do is send somebody up there with two long lines to secure the front and aft, and Gainer's going to tell you all about that process. What we use to tie up to a harbour wall is long 20 meter cable um, ropes. And um, I've already done the athletics going up and down. Um, and then on top of that, I need um, what's called an angel. And uh, what happens with the angel is as the tide goes up, it goes down. <laughs> what is an angel? Uh, basically, I'll show you. Here's ours. And it is a, a long, uh, it's a rather large shackle in our case. And um, what you need is this angel to just be touching the water when you are at low tide. It doesn't have to be a heavy shackle though, does it? No, it can be anything as long, but we find the shackles easy because it means that we can set up um, the lines first and then we can um, add it on later. So uh, it just means that the process is a little bit easier for us because we've got the line sorted and then we just add the shackle. We also have an angel forward. Now, uh, one of the things that um, has come up with uh, this harbour wall is um, luckily we are on uh, starboard, but if we were on port, our aerial is in completely the wrong place. When you're going to go onto a harbour wall, you want your fenders nice and high and lots of them at the bulge. Well, we've arrived in the Isle of Man and <laughs> you might be able to hear that it's a bit of a blowy day. Um, the boat's moving around quite a bit. Um, whoa! whoa. <laughs> Definitely a bit of a blowy day. God almighty. Right, um, when we arrived here, um, we put ourselves on the outer pontoon, the waiting pontoon. Um, of the pricing scheme here in Douglas, it is the cheapest. It's about half the price of the um, main pontoons. Um, the harbour wall, which is where we are now, is midway in between. So it's about three quarters of the price of the main pontoons. So, um, it's a good deal for us because it's cheaper than the pontoon. There's still electric on top of the wall, uh, but it has the huge advantage that you don't get hammered like we did on the outer pontoon. We got absolutely thumped out there in a blowy day. I haven't said that's a very, very blowy day today in the Isle of Man, isn't it? It is. Um, and um, We're moving. I actually, we are moving a fair bit, but I actually think it would actually be worse on the pontoons the harbour wall is protecting us to some extent i think i preferred it when it was down below and couldn't see how much the boat was moving <laughs> <laughs> however one of the things that we've discovered is that the isle of man has a deal um, and what that deal is you can pay for 40 days of time in the isle of man and uh, that covers for the entire summer season Yes, so it runs out, it stops working at the end of September. It must, it must start about April or so. It does, it starts the 1st of April. And it runs that. So if you're in the Isle of Man and- Or this area. Yeah, and you're intending to be in any of the harbours, in Peel, in Port Erin, in Douglas, Port St Mary, doesn't matter, any of them. You can mirror against their harbour walls for a fixed charge. And that charge for our boat it's £200 for 40 days or £5 a day. Uh, if we're here 10 days and we leave, do things and come back, the clock starts sticking on day number 11. 
Yeah. So it's not like the 40 days are from when you first arrive and then you've got 40 days. It's 40 days of time in the Isle of Man for the summer season. Mm. Yeah. So um, we just want to uh, tell people about it because uh, we only found out by chance. Um, but um, so we're telling um, other people, you know, you about this deal. But uh, we've also been asked by um, somebody who has knows people in the Isle of Man about what other things would encourage sailors to come to the Isle of Man. You know, what kind of facilities can they put yeah. in? If you sail North Wales, Southern Scotland, Northern Ireland, Ireland, maybe the, uh, the English coast up around, say, Whitehaven, that sort of thing, what stops you visiting the Isle of Man? What is, it, what is it that's missing that doesn't draw you here? If it was here, what would it be to make you come here? Mm -hmm. um, we've, been asked, we've been asked to ask you, and then when we find out, to pass those contributions on, and we'd like to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you're sailing in this general area, and you've got ideas about what would make this a more visitable place for you, do let us know, because they're keen to hear. Mm. As I say, knowing about this deal, uh, for me, um, does in encourage me to stay longer, should we say? Well, definitely, because our, our current plan is to go from here when the weather lets us, um, sail northward, do some stuff up around up in the north, and then come back here for the end of the season. Basically, yeah, because now we know that this deal exists. Coming back here for the end of the season just makes good sense. And also, we've been stuck here with weather so long, we only had to pay about another 30 quid to get the day. <laughs> So, in our case, that was another motivator. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. And the other thing is that, as far as we're concerned, this marina is quite compact. It's not very wide. All the pontoons are laid at angles, so the fingers are laid at angles so boats can get in. But it's quite difficult to get boats in and out. There's not a lot of room for manoeuvre. Coming on your harbour wall here is really easy for us because when we're done, we just pull the nose in and the gate's over there. We just go straight backwards. It's easy to get off the wall compared to getting off the fingers. Mm. Um, if you're a smaller boat, I don't think it's an issue. Mm. Anything over 10 metres, 11 metres, I think you're probably better on the harbour wall.